Hello everyone. Welcome to QRG Technologies. Let me introduce about myself before starting Oracle 12C database demo. My name is Ahad. I have 10 plus years of uh, real-time experience in production support. Thorough knowledge in Oracle database version 11G and 12C architecture. Hands-on experience in Oracle database administration. Ironman, Ironman backup and recoveries. Data Guard configuration. And I have four years of training experience. Ability to capture and motivate audience in the training. Handled lot of personal and corporate trainings as well. So let's start Oracle 12C demo. Before starting the Oracle 12C demo, let's understand relational database concept. In 1970, E.F. Codd proposed a relational database model for database system, that is RDBMS. RDBMS stands for Relational Database Management System. And RDBMS is the basis for SQL, that means Structure Query Language. And for all modern database systems such as Microsoft SQL Server, IBM DB2, Oracle, MySQL, and Microsoft Access. And then, let's understand brief history of Oracle database. Fine. And in 1977, Larry Ellison, Bob Miner, and EDOA started the consultancy called Software Development Laboratories which became Relational Software Incorporation in 1983, became Oracle System Corporation and then later Oracle Corporation. And now it is well known with the name of Oracle Corporation and Larry Ellison is the CEO of this uh, Oracle Corporation currently. Okay. There are, uh, there are several releases have been released by the Oracle Corporation till 2018. So let, let's understand all those releases from 1977 to 2018. In 1979, okay, Relational Software Incorporation introduced Oracle version 2 as the first commercially available SQL based RDBMS. And it's a landmark even in the history of relational databases. And Oracle version 3 released in 1983. And it was the first relational database to run on the mainframes, mini computers and PCs. Version 4 introduced, okay, uh, with the read consistency. Version 5 released in 1985 supported distributed database systems. Version 6 brought enhancements to scalability and backup and recovery. And Oracle version 7 released in 1992 introduced with the PLSQL stored procedures and triggers. After that Oracle version 8 was released in 1997 and this Oracle 8 supported partitioning of large tables. And after that, Oracle 8i database released in 1999. And it, pro it provided support for internet protocol and server side support for Java. And after that, in 2001, Oracle 9Y introduced, Oracle 9I was introduced with the rack. It's a Oracle rack, that means, rack means it's a real application cluster, which is enabling multiple instances to access a single database simultaneously. And after that, Oracle database 10G introduced with the grid computing in 2003. 
This release enabled organizations to virtualize computing resources by building a grid infrastructure based on low-cost commodity servers. And after that, Oracle Database 11G introduced in 2007. Okay, with the new features that enable administrators and developers to adapt quickly to changing business requirements. The key to the key to adaptability is simplifying the information infrastructure by consolidating information and using the automation wherever the possible. So it has made a automation in the manageability, diagnosability and availability. After that, Oracle Database 12C released in 2013, introduced multi-tenant architecture to consolidate multiple independent databases running on different servers into a single container database. Okay, that's a, that's the new feature of, that's the major change of uh, Oracle 12. So, this is called cloud computing. It's the first database for cloud computing. And uh, in 2018, there is a Oracle version 18C is going to be released. Oracle version 18C is going to be released. Okay, in the year uh, in the year 2018. Okay, and after that, let's understand Oracle database. So, what is that Oracle database? So, a database is the or a database is an organized collection of information treated as a unit. Purpose of database is to collect, store, and retrieve retail information for use by database applications. So, every organization has information that it must store and manage to meet its requirements. For example, a corporation must collect and maintain human resource records for its employees. This information must be available to those who need it. So this Oracle database, all the databases maintains the vital information in the database. So this information is very important, okay, for, uh, for you know, uh, decision making. And after that, let us understand why database administration, why DBA. If you want to become a database administrator, no programming skills are required. And uh, there is highly paid salaries for Oracle database administrators in the market. There are a lot of opportunities for Oracle DBS. Why? Because most of the organizations are using the Oracle database for their organizations. Most of them, Oracle, uh, most of them, uh, World Banks are using the Oracle database. And there are a lot of opportunities for the DBS for their database. And the career of Oracle database administrator is challenging and interesting. And ready to append with the latest technologies like Oracle Cloud or Big Data. So, if you want to become a database administrator, if you want to learn a bigger, if you want to learn a Oracle database administrator administration, you must have the basic uh, knowledge on SQL and uh, Linux as well. If you don't know the SQL basics or Linux, so we will be providing you the training on SQL and Linux before starting the Oracle database administration classes. So these are the basic classes will be provided with the free of cost and after completing the basic classes of Linux and uh, SQL will be starting the Oracle database administration classes. Now relational database means here to communicate with the database we need SQL that's a structured query language. So the end user or database administrator for example the end user if you want to retrieve the data from the database if you want to store, insert the data into the database or if you want to modify the data on the database 
And if you want to remove the data from the database, the SQL is required. The structured query language is required. And RDBMS is what it's a consist of tables. Okay, table means what it's a collection of columns and rows. Okay, in that the data will be stored. To communicate with the database, SQL is mandatory and it's a sub language to communicate with the database. Not only the end users will execute the SQL queries, the DBS also execute the SQL, for, SQL queries for retrieving the administrative information from the database. And next is communicating with the, an RDBMS using SQL. So here SQL statement is entered that is selected department underscore name from departments. So department is the table which is already created in the Oracle server Oracle database. Okay and uh, you want to know the department names from that table. The query is written selected department underscore name is the column name from the tables, from the department tables. So the query is entered and the statement is sent to Oracle server and output has been okay given here. So department names have been listed. Those are administration, marketing, shipping, IT, sales, executive, accounting, contracting. These are all the department names which are retrieved from the department's tables from the database. So that's how the SQL are used. The SQL is used to communicate with the database, to retrieve the information, to insert the information, to modify the data, to remove the data from the database. The SQL queries are important. That's why I'm saying it's a sub language to communicate with the Oracle database. And the next is, let us understand, I'm just going to give introduction to Oracle database instance. So there is an instance. Instance means, let us understand that before understanding the instance concept, I'll be introducing the architecture of uh, Oracle database. So Oracle database architecture can be classified into the three structures. One is memory structure and process structure and then storage structure. So there is a memory, in the memory structure you have system global area and uh, program global area. So system global area is also known as shared global area and the program global area is also known as process global area. These are all the memory structure okay, components. And uh, after that in the data uh, when I start the Oracle database architecture in the classes will be understanding one by one all these structures. First I will be explaining about the memory structure briefly and you will be understanding the system global area and its components uh, very briefly understanding. After understanding this uh, system global area components, after uh, understanding this system global area components, we will be understanding the program global area and after completing uh, this memory structure, we will be entering into the process structure. So in the process structure, we have the different uh, okay, structures like uh, user process, database process. User process is nothing but front-end user who uses the application or tool and it is also known as client process. So database process is what it's a backend at the database side. Okay, so database processes are server process and uh, background process. So for server process can be dedicated server process and a shared server process. And after understanding uh, this uh, process structure briefly, we will be entering into the storage structure. And in the storage structure you have the different storage structure, nothing but it's a physical structure. And you will find here physical files like uh, control file, read log file, data files, archive read log file, parameter file, and others. So this is just, uh, these are the structures of Oracle database architecture. What are those? Memory structure, process structure, and the storage structure. Okay, in the demo, I cannot explain all these memory structure, process structure, and the storage structure briefly. It will take a minimum five to four days, five to you know, uh, six days to complete it. 
So all these uh, structures I'll be briefly explaining in the DBA classes. Just I'm giving you overview on this. And after that, you'll be entered. Now let us understand the Oracle uh, you know, database server architecture. Here, this is the server. And there, in the server, there is a RAM and it has hard disk. So we are understanding about the uh, instance. Instance is what is a consist of memory structure. And uh, that means it's a system global area and uh, process structure. So those are like background processes. These are all. Okay, so this instance is existing in the RAM. Always instance will be existing in the RAM. Okay, so after that, the storage structure. The storage structures such as you can say control file, data file, read log file, and archive log. So these files are stored in the hard disk. So with this uh, uh, diagram, you can understand that instance is existing in the RAM and the hard uh, in the the database storage structure the storage structure is existing in the hard disk so that is what the oracle database server architecture and now just now i i explained you that what is the instance means instance means it say consists of memory structure and the background processes you are saying that this is the memory structure that is system global area that consists of background process here you see that uh, database writer checkpoint log writer smon pmon and recover process these are all the background processes and optional background processes are also there archive processes and others and uh, its collection of uh, memory structure and the background process is called instance so whenever you start the instance the system global area is allocated and the background processes are started fine so this is what the instance actually so hope you understood what is the instance means. And after that, so let us see, there are the, okay, uh, single instance uh, database and there is a multiple instance database also. That means single instance versus rack. Rack nothing but, it's a real application cluster. It contains multiple instances accessing to a single database simultaneously. So let us see that, how it is. A second now this is the single instance database here you find only one server in that server you have one instance one data and as I explained you in the previous slide instance is existing in the memory that means it's a RAM and the database is created in the hard disk that's the storage stuff. so in one server you have one instance one database and now you can see here you will find multiple servers node nothing but multi server node 1 node 2 okay in the, every node you know there is a instance in the memory instance 1 in the node 1 instance 2 in the node 2 and this multi, these two instances connecting you know accessing to the database and this database is this database is created in the shared storage and the shared storage is the external device that is called san storage area network so the database is created in the shared storage so multiple instances are accessing a single database simultaneously <coughs> this environment this setup is called that so real application cluster now here let us understand more detailedly instance is what we say here we have the single instance database and it is also known as non cluster system Okay, you have only one server and in that server can have multiple database also. Okay, so here one database, one instance is associated. associated. So D1 is the database name and I1 you are seeing in the server. So I1 is the instance name. So there is an instance for, I1 is the instance for D1 database. And I2 is the instance for D2 database. So every database has its own instance. That is why it's called single instance database. Fine. <coughs> now let us understand cluster system. Now in the cluster system you will find multiple servers. Server 1, server 2 and server 3. So every server has RAM and hard disk. In the RAM every server 
you can see instance is there. In the server 1, there is an instance 1. In the server 2, instance 2. In the server 3, instance 3. These multiple instances are accessing a single database which is created in the shared storage. That's a SAN. So this is called cluster system. Cluster means what is a collection of independent servers acting as a single system. Okay, so here this is what the environment of uh, Oracle Rack, real application cluster. So here in the non-cluster system, you will find only one server and there are multiple databases. Okay, for each database has its own instance. That is in single instance database. But here, multiple instances, here there are several, uh, there are multiple servers. Okay, acting as a single system and every server has one instance and multiple instances are accessing to one database, single database, which is created on the shared storage. That is called cluster system involved. And now, here see, if you are working with a single instance database, what happens? In the rack, there is a high availability concept. How, what is the high availability? Means, if uh, due to some reasons, uh, some, uh, some due to some technical problems, the cluster, the, that, you know, single, this particular server one is crashed. This server is, this server one is crashed. So there are several users are accessing uh, no, the database using the instance one. The instance one is there in the server one. And due to some technical problems or motherboard failure or something, due to some reasons, the server one is crashed. And whatever the users were accessing the database from the instance one, those users will be migrating, okay, failovering to the surviving uh, instance and accessing the database. Means surviving instance means what? There are the two instances currently running now. So any of them, you know, uh, uh, the users will be accessing the database to the data, you know, uh, you, you know using surviving, uh, using uh, running instances. And then, here, let us understand working of single instance database. Here you have a server, and there are the, there is a client, and he wants, he is connecting to the database instance. That's a single instance database. Okay. There are multiple servers, multiple, uh, you know, uh, clients who are using the same instance, one instance only because it's a single instance database and uh, suddenly this instance is crashed. So the connections are lost. Users cannot access the database now. Without instance, users cannot access to the database. And now see, it's a, it's a working of single instance database scenario. Now when you work with the rack environment, working of rack. So there are multiple servers, server 1, server 2, and every server has the instance. Okay, and multiple instances are accessing to single database, which is created in the shared storage. Now see that this is the client, and he is accessing this instance, and another client is accessing other instance. So suddenly what happened, this instance 1 is crashed, the server is crashed. So that this user will be accessing, so this connection is lost, and he will be accessing to the running instance and accessing the database. That is what called high availability. In the rack, there is a high availability okay, a feature. And next is our course content. Let us understand the course content. So our course content has been divided into the three modules. Okay, module one, module two, module three. So module one, Okay, the module one, we have the Oracle database architecture. We'll be understanding about B, uh, about the Oracle database architecture briefly. Okay, all those uh, three different structure, memory structure, process structure, and the storage structure, we'll be understanding. After understanding the Oracle database architecture, we'll be understanding the Oracle software installation, 12C, that to 12C software installation I'll be showing you. And the course going to be, you know, uh, explained, the 12C database only. Uh, in the 12C database, we'll be installing the Oracle software 12C okay and uh, on top of a linux operating system and uh, that installation can be you know gui using the graphical tool graphical user interface and uh, i'll show you in a silent method also okay so silent method means for there, there is no graphical view it totally silent using the rsp file will be you know we will be installing the oracle software and after that we'll be creating the oracle database 12c 
okay on top of uh, oracle software so this database can be created in three different methods one is graphical user interface and the second one is silent method using the response file and uh, the third one is command line in three different methods i'll be showing you the database creation on top of oracle software and next is after uh, creating the database we should know how to start up the database and how to shut down the database there are the different uh, uh, when you start up the instance there is a sequence startup sequence that is startup no mount mount and open so instance can be started up to no mount stage and we can start up the instance up to mount stage and we can start up the instance in a open stage also. So how to start up that? What is the, why do we want to start up the instance in a no mount stage? What are the maintenance tasks we can perform at the no mount stage? And we can also start up the instance up to mount stage. What are the maintenance operations we can perform at the mount stage? And when the instance is open, that time all the users, the front end users are, and the DBS are accessible to the database. The DBS are accessible to the database in, uh, in the no mount stage as well as mount stage. But front end, front end users are accessible to the database when the database is in the open stage for reading and writing purpose. So they can read the information from the database and they can write the data into the database when the database is in the open stage. These are the three different uh, okay, startup sequences. And you will be understanding, okay, uh, uh, we can start up the database in a read-only mode also. We can start up the instance in a restricted mode also. How? All those things will be understanding in the in this concept. After understanding the startup okay procedures, we'll be seeing how to shut down the database. So after understanding the startup procedures, we'll be seeing the how to shut down the database. There are the four different modes to shut down the database. There are like uh, we can see sh uh, shut down immediate, shut down transactional, shut down normal shut down about these are the three these are the four uh, different modes these are the four different modes to shut down the database why there are the different modes what what happens when you perform shutdown normal okay what happens when you shut down transactional what happens when you shut down immediate and what happens when you shut down the database shut down about these are all the shutdown procedures we'll be understanding briefly all these uh, shutdown procedures also. After, after understanding, after uh, having clear idea about the startup and shutdown procedures, then we'll go for, okay, initialization parameters. That means parameter files. This initialization parameters are two types. One is server files, uh, one, one is uh, server parameter file, SP file, and another one is P file. So SP file is what, it's a binary file. Okay, Oracle can, read and write into the sp file and the p file is a text file and oracle can only read the information from this but it cannot write so p file is manually created it's a human readable okay text file sp file is a binary file so the what is the importance of these parameter files okay without these parameter files our instance will not start the database instance will not start i told you the instance is important Okay, without instance, you cannot access, without starting up the instance, you cannot access the database. So to start up of the instance, the parameter files are required, either SP file or P file. And what are the types of uh, parameters are there in the parameter file? Okay, all those things you'll be understanding in the, okay, in these classes, installation parameter class. And after, after understanding about the installation parameters, we'll understand about the, uh, data dictionary so data dictionary contains uh, the database structures metadata information is there in the data dictionary it contains the uh, okay tables information users privileges synonyms indexes all this structure database structure is stored in the data dictionary and there are the views to access this information okay one is the uh, Okay, one is a, a dynamic performance view and another one is static view or you can say dictionary view. There are the two types of views in the data dictionary. One is a dictionary view 
you can say static view and uh, there is a dynamic performance view these are the two different uh, views in the data dictionary to get the information from the data so what are those views see data dictionary views are for example you can say the prefix db underscore all underscore user underscore whichever the view starts with the db underscore all underscore user underscore these views are called static views or dictionary views and dynamic performance views are nothing but v dollar views the views which are starting with the v dollar symbol dollar v and symbol dollar the views which are starting with the v dollar symbol those are called dynamic performance views what is the difference between these two all those things you'll understand in the, in the classes data dictionary views and then <clears throat> we'll understand managing the dynastic data okay this is the very important for the database administrators for okay, diagnosing the information diagnosing the data of the database so there are the several files in that are managing diagnostic data such as alert log file trace file ddl log debug these are all the diagnostic files so alert log file i just not told you alert log file contains it records critical error messages of the database and also administrative information is stored in the alert log file if there is any error occur on the database you can get that error information from the alert log file that is what the diagnosis file alert log file diagnosis okay and the next one is trace file the trace file is what it is also diagnosis file for the background processes for every background process you will find one associated trace file now you have the we have just now seen database writer checkpoint log writer smon pmon archival processor these are all the background processes for each background process it can it has its own trace file and uh, after the debug log so debug log contains all the uh, okay messages about the warnings of the database the condition of the database the health of the database is stored in the debug log like that there are the uh, you know diagnosis files we'll be understanding briefly about all these diagnosis file in the classes i'm just giving over to that so after completing the module 1 we'll be entering into the module 2 okay in the module 2 you'll understand the table space and the data files so database has the two structures one is a logical structure and other one is physical structure so the logical structure nothing but the table space there the table space is is the uh, you know entity of the okay logical structure and the data file is the physical structure physical they is a is come under physical structure is entity of physical structure so in is a table space is what is a combination of logical structure and the physical structure and it's very important to store the information into the data file the logical structure is very important that's a table space is required so there are the different content of table space uh, data files you can see the undo table space and uh, you have the temporary table space so there are the different means what permanent table space is there okay and undo table space and uh, temporary table space the first one is called permanent table space this is one and the second one is undo table space and third one is temporary table space so permanent table space contains users data actually okay all the users created tables information that data is stored into the permanent table space and uh, the permanent table space is the default table space for the entire database there will be a default table space for the entire database that's a permanent table space and undo table space undo table space contains all old old records undo records you can say and undo table space provides read consistency from the undo table space we can perform roll back operations and also we can perform flash back operations and undo table space has the undo retention time so from that uh, using that undo retention time we can perform the flash back and uh, this undo table space will be okay based on the instance it is active one instance one undo table space is active if you have the multiple instance multiple undo table spaces will be active with the concern instance one instance one undo table space two instance two undo table space like that. 
and temporary table spaces. The temporary table space contains sorting operations. And this temporary table space is also default temporary table space for the entire database. This temporary table space is also default for the entire database. Okay, so in the, in the entire database there are the two table spaces default. One is permanent table space and other one is a temporary table space. And undo table space is active for one instance. One instance, one undo table space. You can create multiple undo table spaces, but at a time only one instance, one undo table space is active. You will be understanding all this briefly, practically in the classes. And the next is control file. See the control file is what is a very important file and it is also known as root file for the entire database. Okay, if this control file contains the information such as database name, okay, database creation timestamp and the data file location and their names, read log file location and their names, archaeolog mode information, SCN number, that's the system chain number you come to know in the classes what is the system chain number and backup information is stored in the control file. Okay, and we have a separate topic. These are all the topics we are going to understand. So in the control file, okay, uh, how to perform the control file multiplexing? So multiplexing means you, are, you want to add one more control file into the database. How to perform that? What is the advantage? And if you lost your control file, okay, uh, how to, uh, you know, how to recover that control file from the multiplex control file that we see. Means multiplexing what you want to act, uh, add one more new control file. Okay, if the one control file, for example, you have the two control file in the database and you want to add one more control file, three, it is what possible. That is called multiplex. Okay, and uh, using the control file, okay, we can rename the database name. Okay, and uh, you know, we can take the control file backup also. Okay, if the control file is lost, how to restore the control file, all those practical I'll show you in the control file classes. And after that, we will understand the read log file. And this read log file contains all the, okay, recently made changes on the database information. It contains all the read entries. New data is stored in the read log file, new. Old data is there, is there in the undo table space. New data is there in the read log file. And this read log file is uh, mandatory for database recovery operation. Okay, we'll understand this in the class. And then archiving. So our database can be in archaeolog mode or no archaeolog mode. The database has the two modes, archaeolog mode, no archaeolog mode. When your database is in archaeolog mode, there is a background process called archival processor that will be archiving the redo data into the different destination that is called archive read log file. Means it is preserving the new data from the read log file and storing it to the RK read log file purpose to protect the new data, read information. If the read log file is crashed or corrupted, you will get the same data from the RK read log file which is stored in a different destination. So it is possible when your database is in RK log mode. If your database is not in RK log mode, there is no archives will be generated. There is no uh, RK processor going to be invoked. There is no preservation of uh, redo information from this redo log file. There may be a chances of data loss. So Oracle recommends that your database should be in an log mode. So that's how how to enable archaeolog, uh, how to enable archaeolog mode on the database, how to you know disable archaeolog mode, and uh, you know, these are all you'll see in the uh, archaeolog file management. And after that, OMF. OMF means Oracle Managed Files. Okay, so it manages the file system. Okay, so here we don't have to provide any uh, location of the data, data file or name of the data file or size of the data file at the time of table space creation. So you have seen on the top there is a table space and data file. How to create a table space and all practically you will be seeing that. Okay, there in the uh, there we have to provide the data file location name and the size and the table space name all those things we have to provide for creating a table space but in the OMF database we have we don't have to provide the data file location we don't have to provide the name of the data file and we don't have to provide the size of the data file everything is managed by the oracle 
So how to, that's a different database that is called Oracle Managed Files. How to create that, I'll show you. Okay. And the next is user administration. So it's a very important. So user administration, the user's accounts are created by the database administrator. And also he can grant the privileges, permissions to the users. And he can create multiple privileges. Okay, he can add uh, multiple privileges in one role and multiple privileges granted to that user. So role means what is what? It's a collection of, it's a group of privileges and this role is you know, facilitating to the database administrator to grant uh, multiple privileges to a user at a time. Okay, and after that, the profile. Profile nothing but it's a limits for password and the resources. How to create the profile and what is the password profile, what is the resource profile, all those things you understand the user administration. Okay, and the next is Oracle Net Services. So Oracle Net Services actually provides the connectivity between the client and the database server. So listener, listener is the word to say ONS file, it say the listener can be static listener and the dynamic listener. Okay. So the listener must be created in the server side to establish the connection, okay? And uh, the TNS name is optional to create at the standard at the client side. There are the different collection and uh, there are the different connection methods. One is easy connection method, and the second one is what local uh, local naming connection method, and the third one is what direct connection method. So you'll see all these these three different connection method in the classes. How I'll be showing you practical words. Okay. And next is distributed databases. Here means the data can be okay shared from local database to remote remote database users. Means here end users can share their uh, information to the okay remote database user. How? By creating the links. There are the two types of links: private link and public link. And these links are created, these links are, okay, uh, these links are very, uh, these links are, you know, created by the users, okay, when the database administrator grants him a privilege to create the link. If the user want to create a uh, private link, the database administrator must grant him a privilege called, okay, privilege should be given. Create, uh, okay, database link, uh, so and so user. This privilege is there. Grant to create a database link to so and so user name. So the privilege is granted. So like that, whoever the what is the difference between the private link and the data public link? So whoever whoever get the privilege of creating the private link, that particular user can access the object of the remote database user. So here in the uh, database links, what happening? One user is accessing the remote database. Uh, users object. So two different databases, DB1 is there, DB2 is there. Okay, so DB1 user wants to access the DB2 users object. That is possible when the link is created between these two databases. So that can be private link. So private link means what whoever got the permission of creating the private link, uh, that particular user only can access the object of a remote user object, remote user, okay, object. And the public link. To create a public link also permission is required from the DB. So when the user create a public link, after getting a permission from the privilege from the database administrator, so this, uh, okay, uh, this link name, the, so this is, this is, you know, this, uh, so whenever the, whenever the user want to access the object of the remote database user, there will be a link name created for the public link or private link using that link name they can access. So if they have created the public link, the name is something different, something like pub underscore link. So all the users of this database, DB1 users, can access uh, using that uh, link name, okay, the remote users object. All the users can access, publicly accessible that uh, object of the remote database. That's the difference. We'll be seeing this practical, I'll be showing you, okay, in the classes. And after that completing, Module 2 will be entering into the module 3. So module 3 contains the topics like backup and recovery. 
So how to perform the backup of your target data? Backup nothing but what? It's a duplicate copy of the original file. Why do you want to take a backup for protecting the database? So it's a primary role of the database administrator. These are all the whatever we have discussed so far uh, in the module 1, module 2 and module 3 and going forward we are understanding those all topics. Those are all the administrator's roles. These are the roles of the database administrator. So the primary role of the database administrator is what? Backup and backup. So to protect the database, to protect the database data, backup must be performed without fail. So how to take the backup of your target database? Okay, there are the different methods. We have the cold backup method and we have the hot backup method. What is the cold backup? What is the hot backup? We we'll understand the classes. And there are the different uh, tools also. We can use the uh, no, RMAN, RMAN nothing but recovery manager utility. And we can use OEM, Oracle Enterprise Manager. And we can perform, okay, we can use command line also. Command line means totally, you know, uh, this command line means what? The DBA will be relying, this uh, command line backup methods will be relying on the operating system commands only. You have to use the OS level commands, like the CP command or tar, like Unix level commands, to take the manual backups. So two types of backup uh, methods, cold backup, okay? Hot backup. We can use the different tools to take the backup. RMAN is the most recommended method for backing up of your target database. OEM is what is a graphical method. Oracle Enterprise method. Okay. Man. OEM. Oracle Enterprise Manager. That's a GUI. And command line. Using the commands and scripts, we can take the backup. And the next is flashback technologies. So it's a unique feature of the Oracle database, flashback technologies. That is, you may see, uncommitted data can be rolled back. Okay, if the transaction is committed and you want, the data is deleted now. Its data is you know, not there. And you want to flashback the database. It's possible in the Oracle database. So the flashback database, what is a flashback technology? Is what is a group of features on the database. Using those features, we can perform the flashback of your you know, drop the objects. Uh, okay, so, uh, so this flashback technology is not depending on the backups. The flashback technology is dependent on the under retention time. Within under retention time, we can perform the flashback. How? That we understand. There are the there are the different flashback features: flashback table, flashback drop, flashback database. Okay, flashback archaeologs. There are the different features out there. Using those features, the database administrator performs it. So even after commit of transaction, if the data is lost, also we can get the data using the flashback technology. And the next is. Oracle data pump. So in the module 2 I explained that I just told you that the Oracle database has the two structures logical and the physical structure. So Oracle data pump performs the logical structure backup. So logical structure nothing but table space, tables, schema, okay full database structure, metadata backup it performs. So data pump has two different utilities EXPDP exported data pump, INPDP imported data pump. So EXPDP performs, okay, backup. That means unloading the data from the database and storing into the dump file. Dump file is what? It's a physical file of a operating system and it's a binary file and the metadata is storing into the dump file by EXPDP utility. And IMPDP utility, if there is any object is lost, we have taken the backup into the dump file. IMPDP, IMPDP utility is depending on the dump file and uh, if the data is there in the dump file, backup is there in the dump file, if the data is lost on the database, it will be restoring from the dump file to the database. That's the role of okay, IMPDP. Import. Loading the data into the database using the dump. <coughs> and the next is transportable table spaces. So here in the transportation table space, there is a data pump for, okay, involvement will be there. So here how we how do we transport a table space from one database to another database? So to perform that, okay, we need to do, we need to check some prerequisites, okay, uh, all those things in, we'll see in the table space and transportation of table space. So here means what transportation means what migrating a table space from one platform to another platform. So there are the conditions, there are the prerequisites like, okay, if the target database has the operating system windows on the local database, the operating system is Linux. Whenever you want to transport a table space, you need to check 
the Indian, you know, Indian number, that's the Indian number of the operating system, whether they are same or not. Okay, and you need to check whether the table space is encrypted or what. And you need to check whether the table space is self-contained or not. Okay, and whether the, you need to check the time zone of the databases are same or not. So you need to see all these kind of prerequisites and after that only you can perform okay transportation of table space. You can transport a table space. I'll show you all this practically. Okay. And the next is database clone. So clone means what it's a duplication of the production database. Okay, so how to perform the duplicate of your production database? Okay, cloning is what is a, uh, it's a, it's a clone database means what you say identical copy of the production database. So how to take the production database clone, the procedure I'll be showing you this. Using, there are the different procedures to perform the cloning. Okay, wow, that is a cold cloning, hot cloning and using Armin also you can perform the clone. Okay, I'll be also showing the Oracle home clone. That means what RDBMS, Oracle software cloning also in this concept. And after that, data guard. So data guard is what uh, it's a very important configuration. And the data guard will be providing the high availability concept. And the data guard, there are the different protection modes. Okay, uh, uh, maximum protection, maximum availability, and maximum performance. And what actually the data guard? And the data guard had uh, actually the data guard has two different types of roles: primary role, standby role. So primary role nothing but it is done by the production database. Okay, production database is also known as primary uh, primary database. So all the users are connected to connected to the production database from primary database. And whenever they make the changes on the database, those changes will be transmitting from primary to standby. And the standby database is also identical copy of the production database. So whatever you change, whatever the users make the change on the primary side all those changes will be transmitting from primary to standby. Purpose, if the primary is lost, the standby will be there and that will become, okay, that will become, okay, that primary data, that will become as production database and the users can access the same data, okay, from the standby database and that which is recently converted as production, primary database. Okay, this configuration, how this is happening? Okay, all those things, there are the different types of standby database. The concept of data guard is what? Primary database, standby database. Primary nothing but production, standby nothing but, sta uh, standby nothing but identical copy of the production database. And you can say backup copy of the production database. And there are the different types of standby database. Physical standby, logical standby, and snapshot standby. You will understand all those things and configurations. And after that, database patching. Patch is what we say small, it's a tough program and which is used for fixing the bugs of the database. Bugs nothing but error. There are the different types of patches, interim patch, CPU patch, PSU patch, okay, rollback patch, these are all the patches out there. So how to, how to apply these patches on the database, that procedure I'll be showing you. So every quarterly you have to apply the patch. The patches are released by the Oracle support. For the, you know, this patches must be applied for fixing the bugs and also for, you know, security reasons and for upgradations in the releases. And after that, understanding the patching, we'll understand the database upgrade, how to upgrade the database from 11G lower version to higher version. Okay, that procedure we'll be seeing in a graphical method. Okay, and the, this is possible graphically and manually also. And next is, Performance tuning, we have to see, we have to check the performance of the database, okay, and how to check that, okay, based on the hit ratio, okay, we'll see that how to find out the hit ratio and how to tune the uh, performance of the database, the performance tuning classes, and now the 12C major, uh, you know, uh, concept, that's a, you know, the 12C new feature, that's a multi-tenant architecture. Okay, this is the major change occur in the major change occur in the 12C database. It's called multi-tenant architecture. So I'll be just giving you a small introduction about the multi-tenant architecture. Let's see that.
see multi tenant so with that with the multi tenant architecture the course is the course will be completed so in the multi tenant so these are the three modules i will be completing one by one okay briefly and practically i'll be showing for every topic okay and uh, you know the software uh, will be provided to you and practical notes also i'll be giving and the, the material also will be provided to you okay and uh, next is let's understand the multi tenant architecture so the multi tenant architecture is what it's uh, all about uh, it enables the oracle database to function as a multi container database there is a concept of cdb that stands for container database that includes a zero one or more okay customer created pluggable database so container database contains uh, independent the pluggable databases so in the container database you can have 253 pluggable database so prior to 12c prior to 12c before 12c all the databases were called as non container database there was no concept of container database in the 11g or 10g or 9i 8i whatever the previous versions you have seen okay there was there is no concept of container database this container and pluggable database concept is introduced in the 12c in the multi tenant architecture only okay this is what the new change in the 12c and now see what is the consolidation after consolidation i told you okay the 12c is what all about the multi tenant architecture it's uh, explaining about the consolidation of uh, databases in one container database now see that this is the cdb okay in that cdb you have this is the cdb in that cdb you have the multiple pluggable databases okay for every database has the one application the users will be accessing the database using application or tool okay now here you see in the pluggable database these are the pluggable database they are there in the container database for every pluggable database there is a application to access the pluggable database okay so multiple pluggable databases are there in one container and there will be a container database administrator he is a common user that means he can access the container database as well as he can access any of the pluggable database which are there in the container database and there will be separate pluggable database administrator also he will be called as a local user for example there is a this is the pluggable database one pluggable database and he is a local pdb administrator he can access to this particular pluggable database for administration purpose he cannot access any other pluggable database that is what the local one. okay this is the uh, you know uh, after consolidation database now you see uh, before consolidation before consolidation means what prior to 12c how the databases were now see that there is no concept of container database here in this diagram all there is no concept prior to 12c there is no concept of container database in the prior uh, no prior to 12c versions now see that this is the database for this database has its own applications okay multiple databases are independently created and they have their own applications there is no con container database and multiple database administrators are accessing to this all databases this is pure before consolidation fine this is the just i am giving this introduction that's a small introduction if you have any queries anything okay uh, you can contact me you can tell me and thank you bye bye